Have you ever heard an unexplained noise in your house? Have you ever seen anything you couldn't explain? Welcome back to Plastic Lounge Podcast. I am Grits and I'm here with Messiah. Yo, yo. And Rebel. I used to play with electric fences. Thank you so much for watching, Beefy. Rebel is special to us as well. We just hit 3K subscribers and we couldn't have done it without all of you. It means so very much to us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The road to 5K starts right now. You keep watching. We'll keep cranking these out every single week. Without further ado, we have three terrifying supernatural stories for you today. Let's get right into it. Messiah, what do you got for us, baby? Oh, man, do I got a story for you guys today, all right? So, I know we're talking here. You said sur- supernatural. I think it's a good way to kind of define the next clip and story that we're about to talk about here. So, let me take you guys back to 2017. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Unidentified man shows up in a hospital... Hospitals, uh, Miguel Couto Municipal Hospital, big hospital in Rio de Janeiro. A guy shows up in the lobby with a bullet wound through his cheek. Oh, his whole face is bloody. He's clearly shot in the face. So the, a video surfaced around about three weeks after this incident happened. And what I saw and what you guys are about to see is absolutely terrifying. A hospital worker pulls out his phone and begins to film a really, really eerie video. Like I said, after a gunshot victim shows up suddenly and out of the blue and starts just laughing hysterically. He's just laughing. Mind you, blood all over the place. Just laughing. His arms are almost hunched, swinging backwards. I can't really describe it. His back is hunched backwards, and his legs are kind of hunched backwards. And he's walking around laughing hysterically in this hospital. And all these workers are standing around him. In the video, you see clearly hospital workers or whoever is around there, I guess, holding some sort of like gurney or chair or something. And they're kind of holding it, holding this guy back to kind of zone him because he's really erratic. So he's swinging his arms, blood soaked, begins laughing. His back, like I said, arched. Eventually, he stops laughing. And for a split second there, his voice starts to get really deep because this laugh has been a little bit more high pitched. And he starts getting this deep, almost growl-like voice. And he's grunting louder and louder and louder in this clip. Despite being shot in the face, mind you. Clearly, a hole in the cheek, I'm sure it blew out, like, his tongue, like, bad. And so the doctors start to ask him, kind of, and mind you, it's a different language, Um, This is in Brazil, and I don't speak Portuguese, so I did my best to use translate and look what other people translated of what kind of things were being said here. And in this video, you can clearly hear the hospital worker or the doctor ask him for kind of explanation, like, what's going on? What, what, What happened to you? You know, obviously things like that. And at the time of the video, he the 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 unidentified male begins to look over to him and kind of is like and his hands are all like curled up and crunched up and it looks crazy he honestly as you guys kind of know where i'm going with this looks possessed literally looks possessed man making the the demons come out of him exactly and when the doctor asks him what's going on he looks over and his eyes get really big and they almost look like angry and he begins to yell out different things but clearly in english i can hear he keeps saying lucifer 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 so off camera you can hear another man Apparently, um, chanting the Lord's Prayer, which I guess from my research is like they use that for a lot of like, like anti-demon type things and uh, something along the lines of like, you are not powerful, you are not powerful, something like that. You a bitch. In, while, while this off-camera person is doing that, while this unidentified, unidentified man is uh, con- con- jorted, uh, contorted, sorry, 
and uh, disconjointed and everything, he begins to say, quote, I am better than you. You are corrupted. That's what the guy says. And then begins shouting Lucifer. That's crazy. He then goes up to a different guy off camera, the guy that shot, and asks him to hit him and kill him. And to that, that guy responds, I will not hit you because God is greater. Mind you, this is where all information ends. This one two minute clip, there's nothing about the well-being of this guy. Who was this guy? Did they treat him? Did they let them go? There's nothing, boys. This is it? Nothing. That's it? The cliffhanger? It leaves many speculation as to what happened. Was this guy possessed? Saying that he was, you know, um, essentially working for Lucifer. I, I forgot maybe that part. When he was saying Lucifer, he was saying like he works for Lucifer. What if it's just like a guy at his like sweatshop that just kind of like, you know, his name is actually just Lucifer and he's like kind of a chill dude. <laughs> This is absolutely bizarre with the little bit of story context that I gave you guys of where it happened, when it happened and kind of the situation with the gunshot wound. When you see the wound and you see him kind of hunched back, you, you guys see now you've seen the clip now. You see what I'm talking about with him hunched back, yeah. shouting Lucifer. Mind you, they said that his whole mouth is fucked up. Nobody knows when you they don't know his name. There's no records of him. There's nothing. When you search it, there's nothing from... 20, you know, uh, 2017 on. There's not much about this. But it's one of those viral moments in 2017 that maybe some people caught, maybe some people didn't. I think a lot of people refer to it as the zombie man. But the way he was talking and the way that people were shouting different prayers around him and seemed very concerned, it leads me to believe that's potentially a possession case here. He definitely looks possessed. I've ever seen anybody that's possessed. He he looks like the dude to do it. Boy got that virus. That boy got that virus. Dude, I would do I swear to you, I was watching this clip and when I was doing research, I was doing this late at night a few nights ago, and I literally got goosebumps and I had to turn it off. And I, I typically don't like I pass those I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. When I seen the like the thumbnail of the video you just showed us, it was like it immediately got me. That's creepy as fuck, man. But so, like I said, a lot of speculation. Obviously, a lot of people say drug related. A lot of people are saying it is possession. Um, so tell us what you think. And if you know more uh, about this story, please let us know in the comments. I would love to know more. Or if you know what he's saying exactly in the clip, please translate for us. Can we have a plastic lounge tech team that just goes down and just tries to find all the information like for this. Yeah. yeah, we need a whole investigation team. Any volunteers? Pla plastic lounge invest investigation team. Let's get it. We'll buy you guys coats. Yeah. <laughs> Letterman jackets. It'll say PLP on the back. It's like FBI, but cooler. We'll give you like cans of air duster. <laughs> That's all you get though. Good luck. <laughs> rip it. <laughs> Just rip and dust her, dude. Fucking <laughs> huff and dust her. <laughs> I found it, Jesus Christ. Honestly, I've seen some clips of people huff and dust her, and that guy in the last clip kind of looked like dude, it a little bit. He might have had a couple cans. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, man. Wild stuff, wild stuff. But uh, what do you guys got for me? You can't kick off a supernatural episode without mentioning perhaps the most haunted event in history you can't so 1974 all six members of the defeo family are sleeping cozy in their beds the oldest son of the family ronald defeo jr takes a 38 marlin rifle and murders his entire family in their sleep he shoots his mom dad and his four siblings after he murders his family he takes a shower calls the police and reports the crime the police arrive and they find the bodies of the defeo family every single one of them face down in their bed straight arms straight legs as if they were positioned like that what they couldn't figure out is why 
all members of the DeFeo family were uh, seemingly undisturbed after Ronald went room to room, essentially popping off shots of this rifle. It puzzled police why nobody woke up. There appeared to be zero struggle at all. So they arrest Ronald DeFeo Jr. He goes to prison. He's sentenced for six consecutive life sentences. There's speculation that he was addicted to drugs. And there's even some rumors that he was hearing voices, that the voices in the house told him to commit the murders. Fast forward one year, 1975, December, George and Kathy Lutz are house hunting and they stumble upon this beautiful six bedroom, huge ceilings, heated pool. There's a boathouse. They're in love with this house. 112 Ocean Avenue. It's a little out of their budget, but they're they're going to splurge a little bit. They really want this house. So they talk to the realtor. During the closing, they're like, by the way, I'm kind of required to tell you this, Mr. Lutz. But there was a grisly murder here last year. In fact, almost one year ago, exactly. So George and Kathy, they're talking it over. They're like, oh, I don't know if we should do it. They're they're kind of religious. So George is like, houses don't have memories. We're not we're we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna be bothered by all that. It was a horrible event that happened, but we don't think it'll have anything to do with the house, or we don't think it's wrong to buy the house. So they pulled the trigger on the house, no pun intended. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> So the Lutzes move in, George, Kathy, and their children. They're moving in furniture. They get everything settled in, beds, clothes, the dogs there. And a few nights go by. They start hearing really strange noises, doors creaking, footsteps, a little like muffled laugh here and there. And all of a sudden, the family starts seeing George, the dad, change his demeanor. He used to be a very stoic, but also caring man. And he slowly changed to like a irritated, mean, cold, short tempered man, which is very uncharacteristic of George. So the family claims now George can't stop waking up every single night at 3 15 a.m. Like clockwork, George opens his eyes straight out of a sleep, looks at the clock. It's 3 15 a.m. Later finding out that that's the exact time Ronald DeFeo Jr started murdering his family in the very same house. During one of these nights, George Lutz was wandering around at 3, 3.15 a.m. because he couldn't sleep. He, uh, he smells the smell. He's like, what the hell's the smell? Kind of like a fruity, but like decomposing smell. Pretty rotten. And he opens the door to the basement and he goes down to the basement and he's like sniffing around for the smell. It just seems to be coming and going. It's whiffs of it and then it goes away. And while he's in the basement searching for the smell, he notices this large cabinet that looks like it's kind of like holding up a door that they really didn't see when they moved in. The cabinet was there when they moved in. It's not their cabinet. So he moves the cabinet aside and sure enough, there's a small, tiny door behind it. When they closed on the house, the realtor mentions nothing of this extra room. And it wasn't listed in the extra square footage in the house. So this was all new to him. He opens the door and what he finds beyond the door is super weird. It's a bright, bright red painted room. It's very small, only enough for maybe two people to sit like face to face. And it smells like absolute while he's in the basement in this weird, bright red room. He looks at the family dog who's down in the basement with him. 
and the dog's looking at George and just leaves. He doesn't want anything to do with this room. He refuses to go in, he refuses to even barely look at it. The dog hightails it out of there, out of the basement upstairs. So during this time, while George is waking up every night at 3.15, something else is going on with Kathy, the mom. Members of the family, George included, and the children, even Kathy's mother, who would come over and visit, start to notice that Kathy appears to be aging rapidly. Every time her mom comes over, or every time the children look at her, or every time George is laying down for bed, leans over and gives her a kiss goodnight, they all notice, for some reason, Kathy looks as if she's getting older at a very rapid rate. She's starting to have wrinkles on her forehead, on her cheeks. Cheekbones are kind of protruding a little bit. It's it's almost disturbing to everybody to the point where they remark it to each other. Now, also during this time, one of their children, Missy, she's a little girl. She starts claiming to be playing with an imaginary friend. Only this imaginary friend is not a human. It's a pig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She claims the pig name is Jody and has bright red eyes. She says Jody doesn't talk much, but only to her. And she said Jody says something bad happens in this house. Now, this is all, you know, it sounds pretty far fetched what Jody, what, what Missy is saying about this pig named Jody. However, a few days later, after Missy is telling her mom and dad this about the imaginary pig, George, the dad, he's outside chopping wood by the boathouse, and he looks up to the top floor of the house where Missy's room is, and he can clear as day see Missy, his daughter, staring out the window, down right at George, her dad. Only she's not alone. George 100% clearly sees pig behind her. And he said the pig's eyes were dark blood red. George, being a man of faith and logic, freaks out. He books it into the house, runs upstairs, runs to his daughter Missy's room, bursts open the door, and Missy is nowhere near the window. She's all the way on the other side of the room, in bed, under the covers, sleeping. Only when he burst open the door, she woke up. So after that, the Lutzes are very freaked out about the house. About a month or two had gone by. They start talking about their exit plan. They kind of, they kind of don't want to be here anymore. A few more things happen, uh, doors, are just ripped off the hinges in the house. They hear footsteps, voices. They, one time during the winter, opened one of the rooms in the downstairs, opened one of the doors to the rooms, and thousands upon thousands of black flies poured out of the room in the middle of winter, unexplained. They had to open all the windows to get all the flies out of the house. I've had that. <laughs> summertime fruit flies happens all the time it's it wasn't fruit flies it was like flies also during the same time george was outside walking around his property and he noticed hooved footprints surrounding his house in circles this is amityville new york so they're not getting very many hooved animals there maybe some deer but these hooves were like horse sized, although they didn't look like horses. After all this happens, especially George seeing the pig behind his daughter, they don't spend another night in the house. They pack one or two outfits and leave every single one of their possessions in the house. They leave and they never come back again. This house goes on to spark the novel, the Amityville Horror, and countless films 
countless shows, countless stories. We all know this is the Amityville Horror House. Horror House? The Amityville Horror House. There's some hoes in this house. (laughs) I think they all just got haunted by a pig. Everyone's so wrapped up about like goats being demons and everything. We need to start focusing on pigs. Oh, pigs are creepy too. Pigs are kind of creepy. Pigs are my favorite animal, but okay. I should mention that uh, a while after this happened, this sparked like a huge like American uproar of like curiosity into horror and stuff. So it kind of like dug up some secrets of the family of not the DeFeos, oddly enough, but the Lutzes. I mentioned George was a man of faith, but his entire family said that George was secretly obsessed with the occult. Oh, so take that however you want, but nothing else ever came up. That makes sense, man. To believe in like the cult, right? You kind of have to believe in the other side. Maybe George's like belief in that stuff kind of helped whatever manifest itself in the Amityville Horror House. Maybe George was the pig. Yeah. (laughs) Rebel, what do you got for us? So I have a little story for you guys. We all know, and some would say that we all love the doll Annabelle. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. There's countless movies for it. Now, I have another story because it's not Annabelle. I have another story that is infamously known the world's most haunted doll. Oh, God. It's been said that it's worse than Annabelle. So let me take you back to 1904 in Germany. There's a there's a little doll that's being made in a factory there and some guy picks it up, buys it, and he's going to bring it to his grandson as a gift. Now, this grandson's name is Robert Eugene Otto, otherwise known as Gene. His grandpa being the loving old man that he is, he's a great guy. So the grandpa is going and giving him his gift and Gene falls in love with it instantly they are inseparable gene and this doll now for some reason they named the doll robert now mind you robert is the same name as gene robert eugene otto so they just gave the doll the kid's first name for an unknown reason weird but okay it's very weird but like i said the kid's name is gene the doll's name is going to be robert for the rest of the story but like i said They are inseparable. The kid plays and also sleeps with this doll. Now, this doll is life size, like three feet tall. Oh, so it's like a bitch, not like a little like doll. It ain't no bitch doll. All right, this is a huge doll. doll. It's a child doll. So Eugene, little Gene out there, treats this doll as like a real person. He brings it everywhere. They go shopping together. He gets them outfits, like little kid outfits. And then all of a sudden, things start going missing in the house. Things start breaking in the house. But, you know, you can just kind of like, you can kind of chalk it up to random stuff happening inside. Like, oh, I forgot to place my key somewhere. It happens. But one night, one night turned everything around. So Gene was in his bed going to sleep. It's really, really late. The parents are in their room going to bed. And then obviously Robert's in Gene's room as well. And then all of a sudden the parents hear this loud commotion coming from Gene's room. There's things being like tossed and smacking the walls. Gene screaming out of fear in his side of his room. The parents think maybe someone's breaking in, trying to steal our son. They go charging into the room. All the commotion stops. They see everything thrown around across this room. I mean, everything like there's desks flying into the wall, chairs flipped over across the room. And they notice Gene huddled in a corner, cowering in fear and is just staring at Robert the doll. He's sitting perfectly at the end of the bed, untouched in an upright position. So after everything's flying around, the doll is okay. 
The doll is untouched and is in a perfect position. And so obviously this has been, you know, traumatizing. And the parents don't know what to make of it. So they're like, you know what? We're just going to calm you down. We're going to have you go back to bed. We're going to get try to get some sleep. This happened frequently. It was almost every night. It was almost nightly for them where stuff would just start getting thrown across the room. And every single time, Gene, his answer was Robert did it. He would always blame the doll. And so after this night, his obsession grew with this doll. He started treating it like a real person. And there'd be time like he would be talking to this doll, having full on conversations. And then the parents would hear him talking to this doll. And then they would hear another voice talk back. Oh, a no. Deeper voice. They would hear a deeper voice talk back to the, their child. And they would open up the door. No one. No one is there besides Gene and Robert. They would ask who he was talking to. He would just say Robert. Now, obviously, with all the stuff happening nightly and him talking back and forth with this doll, the doll had a hold over Gene where Gene was terrified of this doll, but he could not be separated from it. He always had to be talking to it like a friend. And the doll would get upset with, it, with Gene. The doll would rip apart other toys that Gene would play with. And almost like he made it so Gene would only focus on him. And now you could be saying, hey, this could be someone's story that's just being portrayed. This is where it gets weird. So other people started noticing weird things happening around this doll, pretty much. Other family members would come and visit and they would notice Robert moving from different locations across the house. So imagine you're sitting there on your couch. You look over at a chair. Robert sitting there. You talk to your friend or your, your family member and you look back over and he's across the room sitting somewhere else staring at you. <laughs> oh my God. It's insane. But it gets worse. So allegedly, I, as I was doing research for this, I couldn't actually verify that this happened, but allegedly the aunt was so creeped out by Robert that she locked it away in the attic. And obviously, Robert did not like this and retaliated. And the aunt died the same night that that happened. Oh, they just they kept Robert up there, though. They didn't take him down or anything. They kept him in the attic because things were getting so weird in the house. They would hear footsteps running around upstairs in the attic and also some giggling where there shouldn't be anyone up there. So imagine you're just sitting there walking in a hallway, you just hear little kid footsteps running across above your head. Yeah, that would give me chills. I would. I would be terrified. Flee the country. So speaking of which, Gene did. Gene grew up. Gene became, he moved away, became a painter, a professional painter as his day job. And also got married, had a nice fulfilling life. However, Robert got back into Gene's possession. I don't know exactly how it got back. His parents might have died and just it ended up being his again. But his wife ended up hating the doll. She got so creeped out by it instantly, just got creeped out by this doll. So she's like, I can't have this in here. I need you to lock it away in the attic, just like before. And so they did that. They put it away in the attic. But they gave it a full room with furniture and luxury items upstairs so the doll would not be pissed off. That is I was about to say, because that guy, he would have to know that that's the same doll. He wouldn't just be like, yeah, throw it in the attic again. They gave it its own room upstairs. And apparently Robert requested that it have a window so it could stare out into the world. Oh, my God. Watch over people. Whenever Gene had free time, he would go upstairs and hang out with Robert up in Robert's room. 
and paint up there. He would just go paint up there, but he would always be around the doll whenever he had free time. I don't know about you, but that is the creepiest thing. Whether it's, whether it's, you know, haunted or not, that alone is just creepy to me. Yep. I'd call the police on him. I would just call the police on Gene, but, you know, <laughs> to each of their own. Painting with a doll, yeah. Instead of, like, you know, your family. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. But, like I said before, not just the people in the house were noticing this. Other people notice weird things about the doll. And so, like I said before, there was a window inside that room. A bunch of kids outside as they're coming and going from school, wherever they have to go, they would walk by and they notice Robert sitting in this window, staring at them. And they would watch him disappear right in front of their eyes what? and then reappear again. Almost like he's backing away from the window and coming back and looking back at them. And so they got so creeped out by this, just kids on the side of the road, that they started avoiding this house, walking around it, and just like not going that way. Like the creepy alleyway that you don't go down. With all this being said, Gene would go up there pretty much whenever he could until he died in 1974. However, it doesn't stop there. When Gene died, a lady bought the house or acquired the house for some other means. Her name was Myrtle. Now I could be butchering her last name here. Myrtle Ruder? <laughs> Ruder. Myrtle Ruder. Let's call let's let's go with that. <laughs> but she corroborated many of the stories. She would say that Robert would just show up in different locations across the house. She would have visitors over and they would also see him appearing, reappearing in different locations. And they would also notice that his facial expressions would change. Almost like if they were, you know, making fun of Robert or whatever, his facial expressions would get angry. And so obviously this creeped her out. She couldn't handle this. So she donated it to a museum. Now that museum, she donated it to Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Oh, it's in America? It's in America. And also, I have a uh, little story for you guys. Personal story. I went there. You seen this thing? I was inches away from this doll. No way. When? When I went, went to Key West. I went to Key West. I went to this museum. It's in like a fort museum. And it's locked inside this... I would I wouldn't say bulletproof glass, but it's definitely a glass casing where the doll just sits there and waits. And like I said, it's a large doll. It's like half the size of me. And I was inches away from it. Like I could breathe on the glass staring into its black beady eyes. And the hauntings also don't stop there. So there's a little thing that they got going on there where you have to ask it permission to take a picture. If you don't ask permission, you take a picture of him, you will inflict terrible trauma on you pretty much to the point where people write back. You have to write back in letters to say sorry to Robert. You have to apologize for taking his picture without your without his permission. What's he gonna do? She's in a box. Exactly. It's well. It's that's like a physical attachment. It's supposed to be like a demon haunting on this actual doll. So it would aff afflict traumatic experiences on these people, and it's so intense that they get one to three letters a day, pretty much asking for forgiveness. You have a lot of questions in my head. Let's hear them. So this doll, right? So it goes to the museum. Don't you think it would like fuck up everybody that put it in the museum so it wouldn't be in the museum anymore? I bet you Robert doesn't want to be in a box in the museum, right? I don't think he can get out of the box. If you're saying he can affect people like outside the box, he can, he can do whatever. It's fucking Robert, bro. <laughs> it's fucking Robert, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If 
I know anything about, you know, spirits and shit, which I don't. Basically, it attaches to an object. And so it attaches it. And basically, if someone fucks with it, it can affect it somewhere else. Like it can affect something else in a different location, but it's still going to be attached to, let's say, the quote unquote, the doll. It'll still yeah, be but, there. But, right. But, yeah, I, I understand that. My point is, though, I bet you Robert doesn't want to be in a box. Don't you think he would just keep fucking with the museum enough? Well, he gets attention. Maybe he, yeah, maybe he just wants the attention. He loves oh. all these people oh. coming oh, over and snapping he photos. Likes being in the museum. Yeah. And there's videos online of this doll moving inside the glass case and everything. Oh my God. Kind of creepy. I, I'll recommend you guys go go look at it. How do we rid the world of this evil? I was going to ask that. What do you do if you have a doll that's like possessed like that? Like you burn it? Like seems like a bad idea, right? Well, I uh, I don't know <laughs> because I'm not a person that can do that. I don't study into that. So if anybody knows how to get rid of that. Leave a comment because curious. How much money would it take? for you to put lipstick on and kiss his case. Um, why do I have to put lipstick on? So it, <laughs> so it leaves a mark, dude. I feel like I can just do that with my lips, chapstick? dude. Yeah, chapstick, I feel like that's better. No, man, chapstick's, n- chapstick's right, I'm not. Putting on, I'm putting on black lipstick, kissing the glass, um, 500 mil because it, I'm going to die. No, you just got to write a letter saying sorry. Yeah, you just got to get that, that letter back notarized. You just got to fight the demons We're, a little bit. Though. Yeah, but then couldn't I just like have the letter and then like write it there and be like, hey, I'm sorry for that. And then I'm good. <laughs> Robert to make you find the Lord, my guy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Fucking love Robert. How do we get, how do we make our own Robert and then we fight oh. them? Oh. <laughs> we fight them. <laughs> Oh, fight them together, Robert versus our own David? creation. David? <laughs> David versus David. David from AI. <laughs> we'll make her own. We'll model off a of rebel, though. We'll make it look like rebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what we do. We got to get a hold of Elon Musk. He's going to create us an AI robot. We're going to yeah. put that thing in robot versus Robert. Who's yeah. going to win? Technology versus mysticism. We can't take a robot soul. <laughs> we'll put like uh, like oil slick in his shoes so he can just like squirt some out while he's walking. So like Robert slips everywhere. Demon. <laughs> God damn it. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> I want to talk to all of you at home right now. If you have any personal stories, experiences, anything that's happened to you, we actually want to hear about it. Shoot us an email over at plastic lounge podcast at gmail.com. And, uh, and we'll take a look. The discord has been popping off. Thank you for everybody that joined. Please. Click the Discord and joined. We chat offline. We also stream on Twitch. Every single one of us. Go ahead and follow us down below in the description or in our channel description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for the subs. We'll be here every single week with more of the stranger side of reality. This has been Plastic Lounge. Thank you. Good night. Wow.